Hello and welcome to our short presentation of the CSTC. In this example you are going to learn how to use the CSTC during a pen test and we will show you the capabilities of it and uh, yeah we are using here a simple example of uh, obfuscated API. As you can see without using any extension this is pretty much uh, not testable and we're going to show you how you can utilize the CSTC to make um, testing this uh, totally transparent to um, the tester. So um, let's start by explaining how the CSTC works. As soon as you load the extension, uh, this tab gets added to your web seat. And uh, in this tab, you have three more tabs. Um, basically, you have one tab for every request which is um, leaving burp and um, yeah you can modify there the leaving requests you can additionally filter uh, out the tool that you want to uh, activate the transformation for so often you will only use it for the repeater or for the repeater the intruder and the scanner for instance if you, you can also use other tools um, or use the, uh, the uh, web, uh, your web server with it and then you need to enable it for the proxy. Uh, the incoming responses tab is for every message which comes back to burp. Uh, so uh, later on we are going to use uh, in this example where we want to completely transparently work we are going to use these outgoing and incoming response uh, request and response tabs for uh, completely, um, yeah, uh, I don't know how to call it, uh, disabling the obfuscation, so just uh, breaking it. So you can just work with it like a normal lab application. Um, and the formatting tab is for, uh, I think, uh, special purposes. So if you uh, don't want to change the whole request because this would break your browser, but you want to have a look at some obfuscated header or some cookie which uh, is uh, interesting, then you can, you can use this uh, tab here, which then will only uh, uh, do the input transformation in this tab and uh, leave the whole uh, message itself uh, untouched. So let's start um, explaining the the further panels that you see here. So basically you have on the left side all operations which are currently implemented. So for example you can uh, hash uh, the incoming message or outgoing message. Uh, it uh, depends on which tab you're currently on. So if I just uh, put it in here and we have some kind of test value then you can see that a test is fed into uh, the SHA-1 operation and uh, fed out to um, our little output here. So these uh, both windows are only help us to develop the correct recipe. Uh, later on they won't be uh, refreshed and uh, yeah. So what uh, did I just do? I uh, drag and drop uh, an operation here in what we called uh, the first lane. So we have different lanes here. Uh, so this is currently the first lane and the last active lane with an operation, so the last lane with an operation which is not uh, disabled like that uh, is the one which determines uh, the output. Each lane gets fed the input from here, so or better from what's whatever wherever it's coming from. Um, so if I just uh, re-enable it here and we use, uh, I don't know, an MD5 here, you see that uh, this is the MD5 of test. And uh, yeah, you might ask yourself, but why do I have different lanes if only the last active lane uh, is used? And uh, this is very easy because uh, we have um, some kind of uh, variables here, which you can see here. So yeah. I'm sorry, this is due to my window manager, so just uh, ignore the fact that it's uh, maximized. So currently we only have uh, one uh, variable, which is step one, and this is a SHA-1 hash, and we can use it later on. So maybe I want to, um, well, suffix the, the test here, or with uh, the with the SHA-1 hash, then I can just uh, right click here and say outgoing step 1 
and now we have um, yeah the suffix here set to the hash of the start. So if I have here uh, test test, you will see that the hash changes, and this can be useful for some weird uh, JavaScript applications which require you to to hash stuff. So. Some people think that this is a security feature, so a pen tester wouldn't uh, circumvent it, so here it is very easy. But uh, let's head back to our task here. We have um, an application which is uh, somehow obfuscated, and I'm now going to, um, to use this uh, top feature here to show it to you. Uh, to uh, display some more information about this base64 encoded string. So at first, to develop a recipe, I'm going to send it uh, to the correct tab and I'm going to um, jump to it. So this is now the formatting tab. You can see that currently without any, any operation here in the lanes, it just goes through untouched. And uh, I think we all see that this is somehow base64 encoded. So let's at first just uh, look at this part. So we need an extractor for the HTTP body. Uh, now we need to uh, base64 decode it. And now we have some kind of mixed ASCII and other characters here. So it's best to have some kind of uh, hex view of it. So we just transform it to hex. So now um, we can see it here. Let's uh, have a look at it. Uh, often uh, these obfuscations are impl implemented poorly. So as we can see here, I can also, um, so sorry, uh, we let's have a look at the, the base64 uh, decoded stuff again. I can just break here and the processing stop there. So even if there's another active lane, uh, if you set a breakpoint, it will just stop here immediately and uh, return the value. So if we look at it, it's, it's not only by 64 encoded, it does not look like something uh, something really uh, good. So there seems to be more to it than just 60 by 64 decoding. So um, let's try another input. So let's just try to fit some A's to it. And um, yeah, basically in this simple example, we already see something interesting here. We have uh, four A's here. We have four completely same characters here. Let's try some more A's and yeah, we have more 51 here. So that's a good sign. So let's try another character. Let's try B for example. And yes, we have the B. So this is good. So there seems to be some reflection of our input to the output. And in addition, um, we have the, the strange thing here that if we put uh, A's here, which are uh, 41, and uh, we put B's in here, which are 42, then we have this incrementation of the output. So this seems to be a really easy uh, obfuscation using some kind of XOR and because uh, yeah we can just calculate it so if you just uh, x or uh, or 41 with uh, 51 we get uh, 0x10 uh, so uh, basically hex 10 and let's uh, try this so we remove the hex stuff again and we um, have uh, byte operations here which uh, just work on every on every single byte and um, yeah we just uh, use this with uh, hex 10 and now we have uh, some kind of response yeah let's um, I s <laughs> basically I made some mistake here this should be a valid request however for the sake of demonstration I think you can see that um, we have a good um, uh, deobfuscation here and so we can just use it here and we see that he really uh, just prints out our input string and reflects it here um, and that way we could easily defeat the obfuscation and just calculate the key also the key is only one byte long so it's a really simple obfuscation so let's just uh, head back to the incoming responses tab. Let's uh, build uh, the, the similar thing to here and uh, 
let's uh, deal with uh, with the obfuscation that way. So just um, send it uh, to the correct tab. Let's uh, again uh, use this HTTP body extractor. Let's space 64 decode it, and now we just apply uh, the XOR with hex 10. And this is now valid HTTP, and you should always, if you want to use it transparently, so if you want to use other tool, then you should always um, think about um, uh, deobfuscating it correctly. So you just need to get back your HTTP context. So we use something that we call a setter, so we just replace the whole body. You know, uh, if you remember, we have this variable feature, so we just use here the incoming uh, step one. And we now should have um, a completely transparent... Uh, yeah, what did I just forget? I told you beforehand, so this is a very good example of uh, which things you can easily forget. So we did not activate the CSTC for the repeater. So he did not f uh, conduct an input transformation there. So everything is like it is expected. So we now enable the filter. And if we uh, use it again, we now have the completely transparent uh, deobfuscated message here. So this is really good. So, um, now we have the little problem that I started the example here with the wrong um, with the wrong base sixty four decoded string. So I will just um, I will just uh, use the correct one here for the sake of demonstration. So it's basically the one that we also used um, in the example on our website. It's uh, it's just a basic uh, JSON string with uh, some kind of uh, types timestamp so basically something like that and what we now need to do is uh, we need to um, transform this and obfuscate this to send it to the server because we, when i send it uh, this way we have the problem that um, yeah he just tells us this is an invalid request because uh, as you saw earlier, um, the request should be, um, ah, I lost it during to the back and forth going. So uh, basically the input also needs to be obfuscated. So um, let's just send this to the outgoing tab. And let's try to find the correct operations to make this work. So we know that we need just the uh, HTTP body and uh, we need to XOR it with hex 10. And then we need to uh, base 64 decode it. So this string now should somehow better work. So again, I need to activate uh, the request filter for the repeater to make it work. And, ah, now, this is also a really good example of what can go wrong. So, basically, now you might be a bit confused why did the server say a bad request. Well, it's just like I said in the incoming responses tab, I did forgot to um, get the HTTP context back again. So, I'm just sending this to the server and, you know, this is no real uh, HTTP uh, post. So it's just uh, one step missing. You need to replace the body again. You need to set the outgoing step one. So this looks uh, much better now. You can also confirm your request in this uh, CSTC tab here. So this looks correct to me. And yeah, this looks much better. Now we have some kind of other error message. And uh, basically what he now tells me is that uh, the, we have some kind of sequence error so this timestamp gets checked and because it is now outdated uh, yeah the server does not accept the request so we now need to um, uh, change it a bit more so uh, let's have a look we need to add uh, the correct timestamp here before sending it so let's just uh, move everything uh, to the right oh, i just lost uh, 
body extractor. So uh, let's just uh, move this to the right and um, yeah, let's use here the correct step. Now it's step two. Uh, let's uh, get a Unix timestamp. Here we have it. And um, well, we can check if it works. So it works. Uh, don't be confused that it doesn't update. It's just to keep your uh, processor lot uh, low. <laughs> So the autoback feature only uh, bakes if the input changes. You can uh, bake at any time if you just click bake. So you now see that it uh, refreshed the whole thing. So this is just to uh, do not have heavy load. So it's just refreshing all over. So it only refreshes when something changes. So let's just uh, remove the breakpoint here. And uh, what we need now is, let's make a breakpoint here. We need to change this, so let's have some kind of string replace here, and now we, um, we need a breakpoint here. Let's just replace. Um, so, yeah, let's just replace uh, this whole um, area here, and replace it with uh, the, uh, this. So now we. Um, we replace the old timestamp, which you can see here, or the current one. And uh, now it you should see here, here you can see the base64 decoded uh, encoded input changes. So now let's repeat our test here. And now we have uh, status OK. So everything worked as expected. And we can now uh, test this whole um, API. And uh, as you can see, now it looks completely different. Now it is just a uh, JSON uh, application which can easily be seen what's going on. And you have some inputs here and it's much easier to test this than uh, the highly obfuscated one. And you do not need to write any line of code. You can just uh, put in operations. You can just uh, straightforward uh, reverse engineer so in this example, the, the obfuscation, but uh, you can also saw here how easy it is to just put in a timestamp uh, here and modify it in every cent. So this is very easy. We have a huge uh, range of um, custom uh, operations here. Uh, so you have uh, data formats, you have uh, hashing for creating, as I said earlier, some kind of uh, checks where the integrity of a special parameter is checked by just hashing it and sending the hash along with the with the key itself. Um, we have these byte operations and we can also make uh, HTTP requests and uh, put in the answer here to um, yeah just to um, uh, get tokens from there and so on. Uh, we also have some kind of, uh, we are somehow uh, sometimes needed a XML signature where we sign an XML document before sending it. So uh, we have some uh, huge uh, variety of um, operations here. And I hope you will find the tool useful and you found the demonstration useful. And we're happy for uh, feedback and uh, if you like the tool. So thanks.